Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be furthering our quest to construct the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia by examining the Hanahana no Mi. The Hanahana no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to fabricate portions of their body onto any physical surface, including living things, but not including sea stone. And yes, that does sound really weird, but it's surprisingly cool. It was eaten by one of our key protagonists in the series, Nico Robin, and made its partial debut during the Whiskey Peak arc, although it wasn't revealed completely until the Alabaster arc. The Hanahana no Mi derives its name directly from the Japanese word for both flower and bloom, being Hana, which in itself references the fruit's nature of being able to sprout body parts. In regards to the English translations, both Viz and Funimation decided to call it the Flower Flower Fruit, which seems pretty reasonable. However, we encounter an odd situation when it comes to the Four Kids dub, as they did not translate the name at all, deciding instead to keep it as the Hana Hana, despite that having absolutely no meaning in English. So that's either a very interesting or a uh, very lazy choice there. But to really kick things off, I'd like to say that the Hana Hana no Mi is one of the most versatile devil fruits we have seen thus far in the series as a whole, let alone the encyclopedia. I mean, just imagine everything that you are already capable of doing with your mere one body. It's an awful lot of things. And with the ability to replicate any part of it, the amount you'd be able to do at any given time undergoes significant multiplication. Many hands make light work after all. And therein lies the key advantage of the Hana Hana no Mi. Arms and hands are stupidly useful appendages. Just imagine how much you can lift currently with your mere two arms. Now add another two arms and all of a sudden you can lift roughly twice as much. And let's say you were capable of lifting, I don't know, 30 kilograms on your own. With two more arms, that should be 60 kilograms and so on and so forth until you sprout a total of 100 arms, which was the maximum limit of Nico Robin pre time skip. And all of a sudden you are lifting three tons. And yeah, I know that's not exactly right because lifting also takes into account a wide array of other bodily muscles, but these extra arms are still going to make you pretty absurdly strong. Of course, probably more so than any other devil fruit, the true strength of the Hana Hana no Mi is directly related to that of the user, given that they are sprouting duplicates of themselves after all. So the more flexible, durable, or stronger one is, the more options this fruit will open up for you. There are of course limitations to these abilities, other than the maximum number of sprouting any particular body part, most notably being that the user of the Hana Hana no Mi can sprout on any surface, however they are only able to do so within a radius of 200 Hana Hanas. A, uh, another fictional unit of measurement invented by Oda to dodge questions. But more importantly, it needs to be flagged that if these sprouted body parts incur damage, in any way, then that will be felt directly by the ability user. So the more bits you sprout, the more you run the risk of being injured and feeling a ton of pain, particularly in a combat situation. And finally, the user of the fruit appears to need to assume a particular pose when engaging in their sprouting abilities, which leaves their original body quite vulnerable. With all of that in mind, we haven't even begun to explore the extended potential of the Hana Hana no Mi. It's outrageous what you can make out of an assortment of body parts, which includes, but is not limited to, nets, shields, production lines, weird floating hands, and thingies, and of course giant limbs cobbled together from smaller ones. And this really is still just all hands and arms. Other body parts are also available, including the ever so helpful legs, the ever sturdy feet, and even your own face. Fun fact actually, Robin was originally supposed to demonstrate a technique called face fleur, where she spawned a second face on the back of Chopper's head, but it was deemed too creepy to publish. Speaking of Robin, we'd be remiss not to acknowledge that she is an extraordinary user of the Hana Hana no Mi, and has been able to push it to the point where she was able to innovate all of the aforementioned techniques, as well as successfully engaging in temporary flight by creating a pair of wings out of replicated arms, and furthermore, post time skip, Robin is even capable of generating full body clones, which is amazing because they aren't bound to a surface like all of the other demonstrated uses of the fruit. Robin has also figured out how to use the Hana Hana no Mi for combat in the most efficient possible way, focusing on incapacitating enemies long before they have a chance to attack her, using a wide array of wrestling based moves. But moving on to the potential awakening of this fruit, the Hana Hana no Mi is an interesting one because it's one of the weirder paramecia types. There's a couple of different avenues this fruit could take, the first of which being the idea that the user is able to morph their surroundings into the shape of whatever body part they desire, or even turn portions of the environment into flesh and blood copies of their body parts as the Hana Hana no Mi already does. It's just an odd one to think about because the defining trait of the fruit is its sprouting. So the other way to think about a potential awakening is giving the user the ability to sprout copies of select portions of their environment, rather than 
just pieces of their own body. Either way, it would add an incredible layer of diversity to an already versatile fruit. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a sprouting human. Despite the emphasis I've been placing on arms and hands during this video, the idea of sprouting feet really needs a bit more focus because essentially, with the power of the Hanahana no Mi, you would be entirely capable of adding feet to anything and turning it into a walking object. Another thing that really needs a bit more emphasis is that this fruit lends itself almost exclusively to ranged combat. Should an opponent ambush or break through to the user of the Hanahana no Mi, then there would be very little recourse. But in essence, the Hanahana no Mi is a Swiss army knife of devil fruits. It would suit just about anybody who consumed it to varying degrees, although I think it would find a natural home with those who are particularly intelligent or artistically inclined in order to explore the full potential of the fruit. And with that in mind, honestly, I believe that the Hanahana no Mi is one of the best devil fruits in the entire series. It probably never gets that kind of recognition because it's not as naturally destructive as most, nor is its user particularly focused on fighting, but let's go so far as to dumb down the criteria to basic combat for a second. Can you imagine how ridiculously amazing the Hanahana no Mi would be in the hands of somebody truly powerful? powerful like Katakuri or Kaido, it would be absolutely berserk. There are very few fruits in the series that I would rather eat than the Hanahana no Mi, and those happen to be some of the most ridiculously overpowered ones in existence, so we are going to be awarding top marks to this phenomenal fruit. And with that, we are going to commit the Hanahana no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, things are going to be getting seriously waxy as we delve into the realm of the Dodo Dodo no Mi. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel, then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Hana Hana no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.